Hey there. Welcome to the Old South Side neighborhood in Indianapolis, Indiana. This is my second video walking tour for this area, but it doesn't really matter which one you watch first. Check the description below for a link to the other video. Here's the area of the city we're talking about, just south of downtown. And here's the specific part of the neighborhood we'll focus on for today's tour. This is the South Side Meridian Business District, spanning the length of Meridian Street from approximately McCarty Street all the way down to Morris Street. There's such a rich history concentrated in so few blocks that we can't even begin to cover it all today. So be sure to check out the links in the description below the video to other resources to learn more. It's worth noting that the area was mostly inhabited by Jewish and African American folks, and at a time when integration in the rest of the city was essentially non-existent, they lived, worked, and went to school together. Residents of the area fondly remember that at one time they had everything they needed within walking distance of their homes, from pharmacies, bakeries, and grocery stores, to restaurants, department stores, gas stations, and even a theater. Much has changed here over the decades, especially in the area where I-70 is now located. Today, we will reminisce about some of the most notable past businesses on this strip of the Old South Side. First, let's take a stroll down the west side of the street, starting at McCarty Street in the north and heading towards Morris in the south. We'll begin with the famous Jewish-owned Shapiro's Delicatessen. While Shapiro's has been here since 1905, it didn't always fill this entire building. There were a number of other businesses here over the years, and one of the most notable was another Jewish-owned business, Paso's Drugs. Mr. William Craig, an African-American former Southside resident and business owner, recalls, Paso's was not segregated. They had a counter, a fountain where you'd stand up and you could get cherry Cokes and stuff like that. This suggests that black and white folks alike enjoyed the simple pleasures of life alongside each other without incident here on the Old South Side. After a gas leak in the 70s caused a fire, the Passos decided to close the store and retire. The building was owned by the founder of Shapiro's, Max Shapiro, so he decided to expand the restaurant into that space. South of Shapiro's is a large parking area that at one time was home to more businesses, including Regan's Bakery. We'll wait to learn more about this when we walk down the east side of the street, where there was another kosher bakery called Kraft's Baking Company. The next door down has been home to the Prince Alexander Architects firm since the mid-90s. In this building was formerly a restaurant, among other things. The Greek Islands restaurant seen here has been around since 1987, but before that, it was Jacob Alenikoff Meats for several decades. Given how many Jewish folks settled in this neighborhood, including Mr. Alenikoff himself, who was from Russia, this kosher meat market was a mainstay of this community. The next strip of businesses has, not surprisingly, also changed a lot over the years. Currently, it houses Indianapolis Vision Care, Stranded Salon, Goldman Jewelry, and Iozzo's Garden of Italy Restaurant. The owners of Goldman Jewelers, who have been here over 15 years, did some of their own archival digging, which they shared with us. They found that these buildings date back to the teen years of the 1900s. This strip is the former home of Vogel's Grocery Market, as well as a liquor store, furniture store, and a shoe repair shop, among other businesses. We're now at Ray Street. The next part of the tour takes us under the highway, both literally and figuratively. This is how former residents mostly refer to the businesses and homes that used to be here. When they recall these places, they imagine them as being under the highway. Here's a map of the area before the construction of the highway, with the outline of I-70 laid over the top in red, and the street we're on marked in green. Clearly, there are a lot of places under the highway. Today, we'll focus on two favorites. For the west side of South Meridian Street, it's Terry's Market, owned by Albert Hazen, who was very fondly remembered by former Southsiders. Though it was actually a few blocks away from Meridian, at Ray and Capitol, Terry's was an important part of the business landscape, and a favorite business of locals for many years. Check out the Neighborhood of Saturdays project in the description to learn more. 
Just after the highway is the headquarters of Crazy Clothes LTD. They've been on the old south side for over 30 years. There was once a service station in this spot. After that, we find the new AJ's Lounge, the oldest African-American-owned bar in Indianapolis, also a woman-owned business, formerly located in Indy's downtown proper. They've moved twice in their 50-some years, finally landing in the old south side in the last four years or so. This building was the home of Meridian Cafe for many years. A few doors down and the last stop on the west side of Meridian is Liquor Barn, where a gas station stood for several decades. Well, that does it for the west side of the South Meridian Business District, or at least that's what we can fit in this video for today. Let's cross the street and head back north to check out the east side of the street, stopping to see more history along the way. In some ways, the construction of I-70 extracted a heavier toll on the east side of Meridian. From Morris Street in the south all the way up to Ray Street, there is only one building left, the old American Fletcher Trust Company, which is now home to the Parish Hall for Sacred Heart Church. Among the many businesses and homes that stood here before the highway, one of the most talked about institutions is the Oriental Theater, located near Wilkin Street, right about here. Despite the aforementioned integration of this neighborhood, African Americans were actually not allowed into this theater. However, many Jewish residents of the Old South Side fondly recall letting their black friends in through the fire exits to join them after the lights went down. The Oriental Theater stood here for over 50 years before being torn down to make way for the interstate, among many other storefronts, including record stores, drug stores, jewelers, and much, much more. Again, check the links in the description to learn more at historicindianapolis.com, where you can find a short article about the history of this place. Don't forget to stop and appreciate the art under the highway, and please take a moment to reflect on the history of the places that once stood here. All right, let's skip ahead just a bit. There we go. We're now back at the corner of Ray Street, heading north. Continuing on, you'll pass the former home of Central Stainless Equipment Incorporated, another woman-owned business, which lived on the old south side from 1934 until about seven years ago when they relocated south to Beach Grove. Just a bit further is the former home of Southside Baking Company, formed in the early 1920s by three partners. Mr. Regenstrief, Mr. Wagner, and Mr. Kraft. The Regenstriefs eventually left and opened Regan's Bakery across the street, which I mentioned earlier. So, after Mr. Wagner retired, it became Kraft's Southside Baking Company around 1944. It remained so until the late 1960s when Mr. Kraft retired. Later, as the Jewish community began to move north, South Meridian was left without a kosher bakery, and Shapiro's began producing their famous rye bread and other popular baked goods in-house. The next small building has been a union hall for almost its entire tenure here on the Old South Side. This includes unions for the bakers we just discussed, salesmen, drivers, and furniture makers. The two buildings after the union hall house attorneys, Glazer and Ebbs first, then Hardiman and Williams. This building, where Hardiman and Williams is, used to be home to Cadillac Plastics Company, and before that, it was a dairy supply company. Now we're approaching Sycamore Street, and a parking lot with some hidden history. In the past, here at Meridian and Sycamore, there was another building on this lot that's now gone. It was Robin's Coffee Company, here on the corner. This lot, across from Shapiro's, will soon be home to a new hotel providing visitors easy access to both the Old South Side's amenities and to downtown. The last stop on our tour finds us back where we started, but on the other side of the street. It's currently home to two small businesses, Healing Arts Indy and J.P. Parker's Flowers. Former businesses located here included a grocery store, a liquor store, and at one time, the Central Labor Council of Marion County. Okay. That concludes this video tour of the South Meridian Business District in the Old South Side neighborhood in Indianapolis, Indiana. On this tour, 
you've seen that this stretch of South Meridian has undergone a lot of changes, along with the rest of the neighborhood as it was impacted by many forces, from the construction of I-70 to the migration of the community's Jewish population further north in the city. In conjunction with the other video tour and the many websites and resources linked below, we hope you learned something new and interesting about this vibrant community. Thanks again for visiting the Old South Side.